So we've got our nice new topology. Spanning tree has learned where the root bridge is, it's learned the cost of each path, and it knows which links to block. That's great, but what happens when the topology changes? Perhaps links are added or removed, or there's hardware failures in the switches. The first thing spanning tree needs to do is to detect these changes. One way it can determine that something has changed is if it doesn't receive the BPDUs when it expects to. Each switch has a timer called the max age timer. This is 10 times the interval at which BPDUs are sent. By default, BPDUs are sent every two seconds, so the default max age timer is 20 seconds. If BPDUs are missing on an interface for the duration of the max age timer, then the switch knows that there is a problem of some sort and it will need to adjust the topology. This means that the spanning tree algorithm needs to run again and probably make different decisions. By way of example, we're going to add a new link to our switch. It's now going to receive BPDUs on two different ports as BPDUs will travel over all possible paths. The result is that our switch now has more than one path to the root bridge. Of course, the switch will need to look at the path cost. It can see that there is a smaller cost in this BPDU, making the new BPDUs superior. So it will need to make this new interface the root port. But remember, there can only be one root port per switch. So the other port loses its root port status. Do you know what happens to this port? Yep, I think you guessed it. As it represents an alternate path to the root bridge, there is a loop and that will need to be blocked. The switch will also notify the rest of the topology that there has been a change. It will do this by sending a special type of BPDU called a TCN or Topology Change Notification. The TCN is sent toward the root bridge. The root bridge then floods its own TCN out through the rest of the topology. There is a little more to the process, but to keep it simple, the point is the whole switching network gets notified that there has been a change. And here are two final questions to consider. In particular, I recommend paying special attention to question 12. It's good to develop a few more skills in the lab if you can. This lab is focusing on the original spanning tree. This is about improving the spanning tree topology, including selecting the best root bridge, selecting backup root bridges, documenting the topology, and changing the cost calculation. Because spanning tree is such an old protocol, the original version doesn't work so well in modern networks. Over the years, there have been a few improvements. The most common one is rapid spanning tree, or RSTP. Head over to the next video where we're going to look at how RSTP improves on the original spanning tree.